everybody, it's Bev. And it's Mark. And we are The, the Redmonds. Welcome to another exciting episode of Meet the Redmonds. And guess what? Meet the Redmonds is our podcast journey about marriage, second chances, and unyielding love. This season, Mark and I share laughs, lessons, and life with some great friends that we meet along the way. We promise to keep the conversation relevant, churchy, and definitely old school. It's a mix that we call the Redmond Way. Season 2 of Meet the Redmond starts streaming October 1st on OCPITV.com every Sunday, 5.30, across all time zones. We'll meet up with you soon. Welcome to part 2 of Let's Get Married on Meet the Redmond's podcast. Yes. And we're back again with our guests, Tyrell and Christina, soon to be Townsend. And in this part two of Let's Get Married, we're going to talk about submission, some misconceptions that people have about that word. The S word. Right. We're going to talk about uh, fixing your spouse's plate. Yay or nay. I don't know where everybody's background is or what you've been exposed to, but there's a little thing in black church culture, just black culture, about fixing your fellas or your guys' plate. What does that really mean? Is it a requirement? Is it the roots to success for marriage? Is it a sign of love? We're getting into it all. Right. Pet actually, peeves. Actually, the fixing the plate thing has some historical bit of roots into it. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll share some little educational tidbits about that. And we talk about cooking and, you know, who's the better cook? Who's the better organizer? Right. <laughs> so we're going to talk about all of that and just get into why Tyrell and Christina have decided to get married. And the unique thing about their wedding, mm-hmm. which is going to be in November, Actually, it is on, on the same day of our anniversary. Yes. So they're destined for success. Absolutely. November 21st is an awesome day. Yes. And you know, I'm just I'm I'm happy for them. I'm proud of them because you don't see young people really stepping out and, and, and making that bold declaration that hey, I wanna be with this person for the rest of my life and they're doing it the right way. They're doing it God's way. So it is outstanding that they have decided to do this and we look forward to them enjoying many many years of marital bliss yes and at the end we come back and we're helping the people we're helping everybody and talking about dating tips if you're out there if you're looking if you are wanting to date what do you do what do you look for right do it like me (laughs) vet her hard and be blessed (laughs) but we're gonna get into this episode (laughs) of let's get married with tyrell and christina soon to be Townsend and we'll show you book information and where you can find me meet the Redmonds on all social media platforms yes we'll be back at the end oh, oh I'm sorry avoid these kind of conversations Tyrell and Christina <laughs> all right peace we'll Bye, see you y'all. later see you in a minute no she's real strong headed she needs to be more submissive and I'm just like I don't know what your definition of submission is mm-hmm. but what I need is someone who's going to help improve Tyrell Mm -hmm. because if I can be reckless Tyrell by myself, I don't need to be in a relationship and be reckless Tyrell. Yeah, Absolutely. You two are going to be just fine. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Like everybody else. (laughs) You know, when you mentioned submission, I think one of our biggest discussions we had when we first got married was do we want to tell the pantyhose story? No, we don't. Yeah, we do. We got to. We got Not to. Really. Okay. But the preface is. No, I got I to gotta tell the story. We couldn't grow by okay. the time we have this. Experience. Okay, here we go. <laughs> there, we were back home in Chicago, and we like to say we have dual membership here in Seattle, and then our home church, Greater Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So there was an afternoon program, and me and Beverly were on program. And it was hot, man. We talking August. So I said something about, are you going to wear pantyhose with your dress? Now, mind you, it was hot. And she was like, nah. And I was like, but you on program. So it tur- it ballooned into this big thing. And that was, eventually I lost. Did I win that discussion? You thought you may have. 
Right. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, just just things like that and little small things like oh fixing fixing your, your, your spouse's plate. How do you feel about that, first of all? Go ahead. Because <laughs> I had beef with this too. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> so yeah, for me, me. I I think <laughs> I don't, I don't mind, right? I don't mind fixing his plate. However, where I started to get a little picky about fixing his plate was when I realized that some of the other women in my family, it was like this expectation, like you're going to let him make his plate. And after that, I was like, oh, of course. Now I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> now now I, I physically can't do it because I need you to know that he is able-bodied. He can go get his own plate. He knows what he wants to eat. And I need you, I, I need everyone to not try to interfere in that way. But do I enjoy making his plate as something where I'm like, oh, I care about you enough, right? That I want to do something for you. Yes. But to do it off of the principle that I have to, no, I can't. I can't. I just can't. I can't. Something yeah, about yeah. it. I'm like, it's a habit. You start it, and now I can't get rid of it. Now you're sitting there, you know, hungry because you didn't want to get out of your face. <laughs> your face is priceless, man. But, no, I, I, I learned very quickly that in order for, like, for the example of plate fixing, no one say nothing to Christina because I'm better off if no one says nothing. <laughs> You are. If no one says idea that, like, I have to, like, there's, like, there's something wrong with you now that you're married, where you're no longer able to. You're in this relationship. You're no longer capable of making your plate. And I'm like, it was perfectly fine years before I got here. Like, you know, no one made his plate in the church lines. So what? So so I I am two plates, and I'm juggling, or I'm making. I oh, my no. my philosophy <laughs> is much. whenever we go out somewhere, I'm praying to God almost in the background talking about please no one say anything about making my plate because if y'all do, then I do got to get up and make my own plate. But if y'all just say I had a woman at church <laughs> say to me, Deacon, do you want me to make your plate? I'm like, don't don't. That is a beat down for you, for you and for me. Yeah. Yes. So yes. No. Yeah. It's, but it's good you understand that. That's that's always big. <laughs> my my big thing is I don't mind fixing a plate. I don't mind doing anything for my husband. One, uh, just out of practicality, standing in line for him may be sometimes a thing. However, where I get uh, myself in a knot is when... Because it means things to the culture or to mm-hmm. other people, and yeah. they cast their ideas on what it's supposed to mean. So, in order to just get through it all, I fix the plate. I usually go and fix the plate mm-hmm. first, set it on down, go back and get mine. It's all, all right. good. As I say, what would you like? Listen, if all good. if you don't think it matters, it does. Because women are watching. They are. They look- but why is that so big? Like, but, I just don't get. And, no, and maybe they're just, looking at they're looking at you to see if you're gonna make the plate. Because if you don't, then they feel that tie is fair game, right? Because, but because like, you're not, you're I don't not taking get, it. It is step definitely step how step that step like step. looked at. It's like okay, well, she hasn't taken care of you, and like if that she's not taking care of you here, she's not taking care of you anywhere else, and now you're available, and I just don't understand yes exactly but i feel exactly. like you have to I, and maybe this is part of this like you know i don't know just us figuring out whatever relationship is you know for us but it, i'm like no i need you i need you to be able to i need you to be able to still be sitting there even if i don't make your plate and still not look available <laughs> that's gotta be a you think that can't be about me making the plate I- my first words are, you are in danger, and I am too. Yes. <laughs> Everyone. like I don't care what you come to ask me. If it's not about God, you are in danger, <laughs> and I am too. Like, Real estate, you might not be in danger, but I need you to, I need to figure out where this line is, because you can really cross into a dangerous zone. Because I yeah. tell her, I was like, she got her PhD, but she, she a little hood too. 
So it might be da- like but I'm telling you, relationships make you like that though. There's all of a sudden you got to be like defensive in a way for like something else. And I'm like, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> you gotta find this. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go home at night. <laughs> I want to go home in peace. You just want peace. I, guess, I don't want to come to the house and I got to walk on eggshells because sister, sister Martha made my plate. No, sister yeah, Martha, no, go far, go someplace though. else. Go sit, <laughs> go fix brother left leg plate because he is single. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I sit with my right hand on the front table so that you can see my ring. No, I cannot help you. <laughs> Look, I don't. I do not. I when, we, when we had the little, uh, the little, after church dinner uh a couple of Sundays ago. I'm not gonna say no names, but my wife said, Do you want me to fix your plate? I, yeah, I'm cool, just put a little something on there. And one of the sisters said, It's so good to see a wife uh uh what did she taking say? care of her husband in the word so following the word or something. Some kind of- I'm still trying to find that scripture, yeah, FYI, yeah. I, so we can put that out there. Have right. found it yet? I just, I just think there has to be a balance. Like I, because I think there's something that is taken away from that experience when you make it forceful, right? Like I, it's, it's fun to do stuff for you. I don't mind doing things for you or for my partner in general, right? Like, but to do it because someone's watching. Oh God, I gotta figure out that. <laughs> I'm still yeah. learning. I'm still learning. I don't know. <laughs> I just took the energy out of it and said, look, mm-hmm. this is something that my husband values as a thing that means a sign of care from me to him. And mm-hmm. in, I would hope that if I needed him to go and stand in line for me, he would do the same. Sure. And how we get down is how we get down. Just sisters, nobody else fixed my head. And, and I was, I was right. on the other side of the room. I, didn't, I was not even privy to the conversation until my wife told me. I was like, wow. It's alive like, and well. See, like, how I avoid it now, especially in public settings, is we're going to go up together. Mm-hmm. When you're ready to eat, I'm ready to eat. Yeah. This way, no one can ask you if you're making my plate, if I'm, like, what's happening, if I bring you a plate down, that, whatever. No, we're just going to go up here together. But it's gonna it kind of dies down. It, it kind of dies down as you get older. But when you first get married, it's an expectation from everybody. Mm-hmm. They're gonna look at you and Christina crazy if mm-hmm. you get up and she don't fix her plate. Guaranteed. It's, it's some kind of old report card. I don't know. <laughs> I exist, but we could spend a whole podcast on "Do you fix your man's plate." Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I totally agree. I totally and what agree. it means to various people. I would just said how you all get down is how you get there. That's mm-hmm. you figure out that language between you two and um just don't let other women fix his plan. That's yeah. Just- Cause I certainly don't get that action at home. It's your your food on the t- on the stove. That is not it. <laughs> well, that's that's it. Open and available. There you go. Ah, <laughs> do you want it now or do you want to warm it up later? Exactly. Babe gets first dibs at the plate. Because usually if, if we're cooking or prepping, I'm done. I need to sit and gather for something. Mean, you go ahead and get your plate, get whatever you need. So you get first dibs. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. All right. So let's help the let's help the young daters out there. <clears throat> Some dating tips. Mm-hmm. Now I'm a person who does believe in dating. I before you court, please go and date. Understand what that process is like. If there's dating out there, what's a smart way to go about it? Mm-hmm. A couple of tips. Mm, that's a good question. I think for me, I enjoyed dating uh, people who were, I don't know, in some ways I could like pre-vet them. So there was this level of, you know, either I knew you through somebody else, which is how, how I met you, or I had enough time to interact with you before I had to 
face to face interact with you. And so I could kind of like meet you and we can kind of talk and just make sure we're on the same page with things that I consider like fundamentally, we have to at least know these things about each other in order to be in the same space. Um, but I don't know if I have any actual like dating tip. Ours are so happenstance. I don't really even know yeah. how how we I don't I don't even know how to explain how we've met like that. So yeah. for me, I would say figure out what you want mm. and don't go into a relationship with the expectation that you can change somebody. Mm. Because yeah, that's I crazy. had my again. I I mentioned my two pri- my two previous relationships before Christina because they were very imperative to just how I look oh. at a partner. Mm-hmm. Because yes, I could have everything that I want in one realm, but if I have to shut part of myself off to be with you, then mm-hmm. I cannot genuinely be with you. Mm-hmm. The other part is if I have to now, again, change the roles and shut off a different part of me or cut off family or cut off working or do something so, um, in lack of a better word, stupid (laughs) to keep your attention, then again, it it must not make sense. Mm -hmm. And what made our dating easy was I did not have to not be Tyrell. I could be Tyrell at work. I could be Tyrell of real estate. I could be Tyrell of our relationship. I could be Tyrell of the church. Mm -hmm. No matter which portion of Tyrell Christina got, she still loved and valued Tyrell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's one of the biggest things is no, if that person cannot deal with the part of you because it's not what they believe or something of whatever can that relationship still work possibly i'm not i'm not going to say that it won't Mm -hmm. but i definitely say that they the person that you're trying to court or trying to move to courting to they at least in the fundamentals have to be able to be the part be a partner in what you're doing in your life currently, mm-hmm. how we go. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what I think. After spending time with someone, you begin to meld each other's traits. Yeah. When we first got together, and I, I don't, I don't know how to put this delicately. I got some tendencies and some ways that I know. Beverly did not like, you know, she's always trying to keep me from going off the deep end and letting people, that was my thing, let somebody have it. I got to get them. <laughs> let me add them. That's a moment. Right. You have to, maybe once a month, just to. <laughs> and let me get them. And Beverly is very, first of all, she's just one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. And I don't like to engage in long discussions with her without either, and I think I've said this before, with either without a thesaurus or a lawyer. One of the two. Because <laughs> she's going to make me look up some words. And I'm like, I ain't never heard that before. So I find myself now, I'm a lot calmer. I still want to get after people. But <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it wouldn't go well for me. So for that one, I'm gonna have to decline that advice. <laughs> All that getting, get an understanding. Don't do that. <laughs> I've been straight to Google. <laughs> Beverly has so many. No, real talk, Beverly. You got so many pairs of shoes. You don't know how many shoes I, pairs I, I think. I know that they're missing. See, <laughs> okay. So now, Christina, your pet peeve. My pet peeve, I think, so one one of the really good things, right, Tyro loves to cook, and that is really nice, and days, things are crazy, but he is definitely a cook who uses every possible thing available to him, and so the dishes, thank you, thank you. But I bet you cold in the kitchen, right? I, you know, I, he, bet, I bet your so cooking good. game is cold, right? 
it's it's always good. I just don't understand how it requires like twenty more dishes than it needed to, right? Like it's so like going down in the kitchen. That's it's why. a lot. It's a, I feel like wait wait wait, Christina, who's the better the cook? We gotta clean the kitchen. It's a who's mess. the better cook? It depends on what we're cooking. It oh. depends on what we're cooking. I got a couple things that I really I really enjoy cooking, and I like to give my time to. But I think as a general cook. He's, he's hydrating better. again, y'all. He's probably better. He's probably better. We'll I, I, better. I kill Beverly on meats. My meat game is vicious. That's it. I can't make size to save my life. <clears throat> yeah. Good way to describe it. There's there's a little truth to that for us. I would say in that realm, I would say you probably got breakfast down pat. Oh, I definitely have breakfast. She got bre she got breakfast down pat. I love breakfast. She can, she can she can Anytime make a killer breakfast. I just, but breakfast. when we when we yeah. come down to like dinner and dessert, that's my realm. Probably. Yeah, that's that's that's, fair. that's, that's, that's my dinner realm. and dessert. Yeah, I, I don't do desserts, you and I can't make yeah. sides like macaroni and cheese or collard greens or anything like that. That's but, fair. I feel like we're both still learning though, because we yeah. had a lot of room. You know, back home, you have a lot of room to be like, okay, I'm, a, yeah. you know, I don't really even need to cook like that because there's so many people around us to cook. And then even when I was living by myself. I was living by myself, so it's like what's one day I'm gonna tell you all about this meatloaf that Beverly cooked. Oh, it was such a disaster! I can tell you now, it was horrible. I don't know where how I lost my synapses for meatloaf, but <laughs> no, it, it was not working. It wait a minute, the big fella came in, saved that meatloaf, made some meatloaf sandwiches that was off the chain. Look, when you give me lemons, I what make a partnership. Does <laughs> Wait, no, you are weak. I am wasn't gonna eat, <laughs> and I'm not gonna serve it to you. Like, okay, no, we, we can salvage that meatloaf. You're not gonna throw away all that ground beef. See, see that's a, that's my that's my philosophy. Right. Don't you be throwing away. Right, you gonna make it work at, at the if it is mm. not edible if it is non-edible <laughs> at that point we throw it away but if it is salvageable in any shape form or fashion i'm gonna figure out a way to salvage this right. dish. the meatloaf was just crumbly that's all you we can rehydrate that thing and make <laughs> make <laughs> meatloaf burgers breadcrumbs i know it's my, real is my man we've made a dangerous combination here but it's <laughs> Look. Well, listen, we we could talk all night, but I know you all got some things to do. And you spent a long day. Right. right. And we got to find some black to wear tomorrow. Mm. The cleaners closed early. We didn't it. make it to the cleaner. So y'all pray for the, for the redness that will be. So we might not have black because we didn't make it clean. We might have blue and is purple. A, is that a thing for today? Honestly, I have no idea. I'm That's a thing actually. for Sunday. You know, Pastor said you, he wants the men in black suits and the women with black dresses and hats. <laughs> that was not on the agenda for the Townsends. Well, y'all so, pray for us, Y'all pray for us because we did we not gonna, have that memo. We're going to figure out something, too. Some days I'm in the season of my life that we may show up in high tops and jeans. It right. just may. Just... We made it into the house of the Lord to worship him. That's it. That's good enough. Nasty. And I'll be down in the first three rows. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the well, we don't ruin anyway. So what does it matter? Oh <laughs> That's how I end up on my face the other Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have been just a pleasure to just talk to, and that's one of the reasons I think we kind of gravitated to them. We like oh, we see a lot of us in them, so. We are looking forward to spending more time hanging out. We got to get a space night or something going on with yeah. some of the younger people. At, Come on over to the rooftop. Yeah, we, we got we have a nice rooftop in our in our building, so you know we can go play space, hang out. You know, but we're gonna let you guys go because we have to get up, and so do you. And we are back. Hopefully you have enjoyed part two of Let's Get Married with Christina and Tyrell, the soon-to-be 
Townsend. We had a good laugh, though. We had some good laughs. We did. It was a good show. We enjoyed talking with them. I think we're finding our niche. And I'm waving at people as they walk by. At, we're outside filming here in Seattle, so it's one of those rare, beautiful days as we're getting into the fall. And if you see behind us, they got they got hydroplane boats and and everything that Beverly won't let me get on. Until we check our life insurance. That's it's paid it. up. It is uh -huh. good. good. Then okay. now we can go. <laughs> we can go <laughs> but again, we had a great time. We had some good laughs. We learned some things about the Townsends. Hopefully, you learned some things about the Redmonds. You and, know, and we continue to learn things about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know, hopefully, when they get to where we are, things will be a lot smoother. Well, you know what? The you eight go years, through this, seasons. right? You you have its ebbs and flows, but the eight years we've been married been the happiest eight years of I my life safe and sound yes eight years she has literally yes. and That's hopefully one day we'll on tell you about plane. the yes. episode that she really had to save me yeah but um it was we, recent <laughs> can i finish okay go ahead. okay we want you to know that we're on all social media platforms but especially you can catch us every sunday on ocpitv.com yep wherever you are whether it's East Coast, West Coast, Central, Mountain. She got mountain time right. I finally got it right. <laughs> Wherever you are, you can catch Meet the Redness. And we're also on various different social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We are on Instagram. Pinterest. Threads. Threads. You can catch us anywhere. And lastly, you can catch us and our books on RedmanProjects.com. You can get our two award-winning books, Finally I Do Again, and... Revelation of a real, real man, man or woman. woman. Do we tell them on Wednesdays we oh. do YouTube? Hit it. <laughs> on Wednesdays we do a replay every Wednesday. We put it up around 6 a.m. so you can watch it throughout youtube.com slash at meet the Redmonds. Right. You can also binge watch season one from YouTube as well. And we just have some people walk through the shop, but that's okay. They're in the background, they can But you can watch season one. You can binge watch all 24 episodes. Yep. Then you can watch season two. So we're going to have that up at 6 in the morning. Don't lose your job watching Meet the Redmonds. I know it's hot to death. But go to work. Go Absolutely go to work. Take your phone with you. Keep it on low. Earbuds. Right. There you go. So we're going to get out of here. We had a great time. Yeah, this was a we good. Did. This was a good couple this is a of good episodes. Setup. Right, yeah. I think we're really hitting our stride in season two, Absolutely. bringing more couples to you, more life, more marriage, more how we do what we do. So you know, it's right. not his way. It's not my wife's way. But it is the, the Redman, Redman way. way.